Welcome to module two, presenting new information. So in this module, we're going to explore three different sections. We're going to first of all think about when we're introducing new information, how it might be really useful to chunk up concepts and make them visible in a concept bubble. We're then going to talk a little bit about making uh, worked models and what that might look like. And finally, we're going to explore the, explore the idea of dual coded information. So let's get started with concept bubbles. As you know, when you're teaching a new concept, it's actually always made up of lots of sub elements, lots of smaller pieces within a concept that students need to understand in a connected way to be, under, to be able to understand truly the concept. So you might have a large learning concept here. Um, it could be anything from um, types of poetry. It could be anything from um, photosynthesis or whatever it might be. You've got a learning concept. You've got something that you want the students to understand. Within that, you have also got sub-elements or sub-concepts that come together um, and generally are connected. And so as students start to connect this information together, it means that they're really starting to understand the concept. So let's have a look at a really simple example here. The learning intention of the learning outcome is the theory of plate tectonics explains global patterns of geological activity and continental movement. So this is what I want students to understand. Within that, I'm going to actually start to break that down a little bit more because that relates to the extreme age and stability of a large part of the Australian continents through its plate tectonic history, recognizing the major plates on a world map. I need students to understand the modeling of sea, sea floor spreading. That means that they need to understand constructive plate boundaries. I'm considering the role of heat energy and convection currents in the movement of tectonic plates. So students need to understand heat energy and convection, the mantle and the core and relating the occurrences of earthquakes and volcanic activity to constructive and destructive plate boundaries. Students need to understand what a volcano is, what destructive plate boundaries do, and what an earthquake is. So, I mean, this is a simple map, and there's probably even more detail that could go into this. But basically what I'm doing is, before trying to present a concept, I'm breaking down the different chunks that I want to present to students first. So I'm really challenging them to um, understand all of these bits and how they link together. In terms of work models, um, I'm thinking about visible modeling. So whenever I'm doing anything, I want the students to um, see it clearly and to understand the process that in a visible way. So for example, if I am using a chalkboard, I might ask the students to move closer to the front so they can interact with my modeling and ask questions. When I am modeling, I'm thinking out loud. I'm making sure I'm drawing or writing and talking out loud as if my inner voice was being made audible. Really, really useful way to help students understand the thinking and connections you're making. And finally, questions, questions, questions. Stopping frequently and asking students what questions they have. During modeling, 90% of the questions should actually be asked by the students, not by the teacher. And one thinking your routine you might use here, which is in your workbook, is the five whys routine. Finally, um, dual coding. This is a really useful thing to, to understand. Basically what du dual coding means is that your brain can take in visual stimuli and verbal stimuli at the same time because they are actually processed in different ways. Any visual stimuli goes to the visual spatial sketch pad. So that means this is one part of the brain where they're able to encode information and it's done synchronously. That means that as you look at a picture, your brain is encoding all of the picture together. And verbal stimuli, so somebody talking to you it uses the auditory loop, which is a different part of your working memory, and actually um, processes things in sequence, because as you hear a thing, it will process that thing, and then it'll process the next thing. So you can indeed connect both of these parts together, the visual, spatial, and auditory loop, within your working memory to help you to encode into your long-term memory information. So what that means for us is that we might want to use um, visuals as well as talking to help the students to have a really deeper understanding of the concept we're trying to share and teach. This is a really short module, but it hopefully has given you three um, areas to look at and, con and consider. Please have a look through your workbook for a little bit more detail on this module. But what we'd love for you to do is to just do a little bit of a, of a reflection in terms of compass points. So compass points is a really nice reflection. Again, this adds into your toolkit. You can use it with students. 
north, east, south, west, what else do you need to know or find out? Like, for example, if you want to learn more about working memory and dual coding, that might be something that you write down here. What excites you about what you've learned? What's the upside? What are the positives? So you can write anything that you're excited about in here. On the West, what worries you about this? What might be a downside? What are some of the negatives that you might see? For example, that you might not have the resources to be able to do dual coding visually, but even a simple diagram on a chalkboard can help with dual coding. And then finally, what's your next step? What suggestions do you have? What are you going to do next? So I'd love you to go through this module again, um, re recap what we've looked at, and then fill in the compass points reflection in your workbook.